we know more about the uh, respective indications for uh, treating uh, pancreatic tumors. Uh, we have no experience or scientific evidence for adenocarcinoma and uh, uh, randomized series are still going on uh, associating uh, RFA and chemotherapy, but we wait for the results. We have results now and some scientific evidence for benign tumor like neuroendocrine tumor and uh, IPMN. For neuroendocrine tumor, uh, we have a, a real efficiency, 85% uh, uh, of the cases, for tumor ranging from 1 to 2 cm and with the G1 of the WUS classification. This is clear now and probably it will change uh, our way to treat these patients. For IPMN, now what we know is that if you treat patients with worrisome features, I mean uh, uh, mural nodules or increase uh, of the diameter of these lesions, more than 5 mm uh, since two years, uh, you decrease the worrisome features uh, in 100% uh, of the cases, and you have a disappearance uh, of the cystic lesion in two thirds of the cases, so less than, than uh, neuroendocrine tumor. So the two main indications are neuroendocrine tumor and IPMN, side branch IPMN, of course. I'm not speaking about main pancreatic duct uh, indications. You saw a case for uh, metastatic uh, 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 renal uh, cancer into uh, the pancreatic gland and so uh, we have also some efficacy, efficacy. it was uh, checked by uh, Marc Giovannini in about 60% of the cases. I have some characteristics uh, which are required to have a successful a procedure and also a procedure without complication. Uh, the, the two characteristics are first the, the diameter of the needle, it's a 19 gauge needle. This is a good diameter if you have to treat lesions uh, into the ancillary process or in the uh, lower part of the head of the pancreas. And the second one is to have a, a cooling needle because if you have a cooling needle, you increase the, efficient, the efficiency of your treatment and you decrease uh, the complications. So you have not so much needle uh, actually uh, having a diameter of 19 gauge needle and uh, having also a uh, uh, cooling needle. So uh, this is the reason for why I'm working with EUS Array uh, from the Taiwan company. This is not uh, uh, advertising, but this is only, only a choice looking to the required characteristics for doing EUS RFA. This is the final uh, main question. Do we uh, include EUS RFA in the algorithm for treating patients? I already told you that for adenocarcinoma, we have no scientific evidence, we have no scientific data, so we have to wait. But for neuroendocrine tumor, which is the main indication for EUS RFA, yes, and, and I discussed with a lot of surgeons and with endocrinologists of the European Society, and probably the good uh, uh, a flowchart uh, for uh, for the patients uh, is uh, to one less one than one centimeter. You follow the patient. You do nothing. More than two centimeter, you send the patient to the surgeon because you have high risk of lymphatic uh, metastasis. And between one to two centimeter, if it is a G1, and usually it's a G1 tumor, you can treat uh, in, in in first intent uh, with EUS RFA, and so you have. Uh, uh, a complication rate uh, of 3% and efficient uh, rate of 85% of the cases. So now we know that probably this is the main choice for G1 tumor between 1 to 2 cm to do first EUS RFA and to follow the patient. If you have a, a failure at one year, of course you send the patient to the surgeon. But in 85% of the cases, you have a success and it's all for the patient. We did a, a prospective series, including 30 patients, to, to evaluate the safety, because the main problem was first to be sure that we are safe if we do 
EUS RFA uh, in the pancreatic gland because, of course, we are all afraid about the high risk of pancreatitis. So we started the study and we had complications in the two first patients until we started with prophylaxis. And the prophylaxis is to use NSAID like for USCP and also antibiotic prophylaxis uh, for avoiding uh, any super infection uh, of the necrosis induced by RFA. And in addition, if you are facing with uh, IPMN, you have to suck the free content and uh, before applying the RFA, because if not, you are applying too much uh, radiofrequency current and you have a risk of complication by burning the adjacent structure. So this is the way to avoid complication. And if you do that, you have a rate of complication ranging between 3 to 10 10 percent of the cases and you saw that in all the case uh, uh, we, we we did uh, the last question about complication are the doctoral injury pancreatic doctoral injury and biliary doctoral injury so we had only one case of uh, pancreatic doctoral injury uh, in our uh, prospective series it was a uh, versong duct very close to a new endocrine tumor lens less than two millimeter so in such a case i think maybe you can uh, imagine that you are going to put a prophylactic pancreatic stent before doing a uh, RFA uh, application. But you know, the complication is 3% and the complication of your CP is between 5 to 10%. So you have to mind about and not to induce any pancreatitis by, in, by putting uh, a, a prophylactic pancreatic stent. This is for the pancreatic duct. And for the bile duct, uh, we had only one case, not in the patient, including in, including in the protocol, but after, because we started to, to use too much uh, uh, shots, and uh, it was a patient with huge IPMN, and we, we, do, we did uh, uh, more than five shots, so, and we had uh, biliary injury, but it was uh, completely solved by, by USCP and conservative treatment. But we decided at this time not to exceed uh, five shots. So you have usually three shots, but you have not to exceed five shots because in, in such a case you have a risk of injury of the bile duct. And if you are close to the pancreatic duct, less than two millimeter, you can discuss about a prophylactic pancreatic stent. 